So all those in favour? Against? Thank you. Carried. So now we're on to staff reports. Christchurch City Holdings half-year interim report. Um, so we have Abby, Gil, Paul and Matt here. And just to let everyone know, this is for information only. And we will be going into PX straight after this to discuss um, more in depth. Sorry, good. Oh. Good morning. Morena. So we're here to talk through our interim report. So that's for the six months to the end of December. Um, we're going to um, split up the talking to the uh, slides between us uh, and then um, obviously over to questions. So perhaps if I um, hand over to you, Paul, in the first instance. Yeah, so um, uh, as Abby noted, this is our uh, effectively our half-year results. So um, for the period to uh, the end of December 2023, which were released on the 29th of February this year, um, and it doesn't just cover our financial results, it also covers uh, our progress towards achieving objectives that were uh, agreed in last year's SOI. Um, and given we didn't have an LOE last year, they actually reflect the enduring statement of expectations that were issued in late 2021. So um, we're obviously conscious that we've moved on from, from that framework. We've got council itself, we've got new strategic objectives, we've got a new LOE. So some of this might feel a bit backward looking, but it's just a function of the reporting period that we're addressing today. Um, and obviously we're in front of you in a couple of weeks to discuss the SOI. Uh, and we've got the um, the run of uh, semi-annual presentations from the subsidiaries coming through April and May. So we'll be back in front of you on a number of occasions in, in coming weeks. Um, firstly, I want to uh, introduce Matt. You wouldn't have uh, uh, had time with Matt. Uh, he's joined us as portfolio manager. Uh, his background was previously chief investment officer of Naitahu Holdings uh, and also acting CFO of Ravensdown. So um, uh, fully understands the Christchurch economy um, and, and the role of an intergenerational investor uh, in investing in that. Uh, I do also want to acknowledge um, Tony. She's not going to... Enjoy that, but um, <laughs> this is actually her last quarterly report session, so she's taken the decision to move on. <laughs> she will enjoy that. Um, uh, and also uh, Kelly Hyde, who has driven our impact program, um, who is also moving on from CCHL in, in the next uh, next few weeks. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll hand over to Matt, and he'll take us through the slides. Um, uh, I think uh, this first one's fairly self-explanatory. Um, uh, Tina Koto, um, uh, pleased to be here for my first time at the table. Um, in terms of our investments, I think uh, we're all familiar with this. This is the $3.8 billion of our market value of our investments and our subsidiaries. But um, I'll carry on to the next slide and we'll cover off on some of the key highlights from the first half of the year for the financials. I guess one figure sticks out here, and that uh, going straight to the bottom line, um, it looks a little soft compared to the 55.3 of the prior period, um, coming at 48.9. Uh, it has to be seen in the context of the prior period included a, a substantial one-off gain in relation to the sale of a, a piece of property related to city care, um, and also there was a number of non-cash. Uh, costs that came through in this uh, more recent half year uh, result. So actually it was there or thereabouts in terms of our expectations um, and, and budgets um, with sort of a number of sort of overs and unders uh, within the portfolio in terms of the individual company performances. Um, in terms of the common themes across the portfolio, inflationary pressures, rising interest costs and the residual impacts of sort of COVID-19 sort of coming through. Um, uh, you, you know, see, on the, on the negative side, you probably see that in the likes of the international passenger numbers being a little bit soft at the airport. Um, not dissimilar to our peer comparison with Auckland, um, facing very similar uh, uh, challenges there, um, particularly ex Asia um, and the passenger numbers coming back. Um, you know, strong results out of Enable, subscriber growth continues to grow, um, population's growing, the network's developing um, as new subdivisions get completed. Um, city. City Care's Spencer Henschel acquisition is broadly tracking to uh, expectations, um, although obviously early days in the, in the context of that. The, the weakest one really was um, the port, um, where we've seen volumes off substantially, uh, particularly on the container side of things, um, but also on the bulk. 
uh, you know, there's a number of factors at play there. I guess it's yeah, you know, a, a little bit of domestic side uh, and uh, pressures on inflation um, and and demand on this side. But you've also got the international challenges to deal with, um, whether it's the Red Sea or uh, strikes on the, in the port in Australia, um, causing challenges with respect to um, Littleton Ports uh, business, which is um, you know, materially lower first half, but not dissimilar to the update you got at the, the first quarter of this year. So, yeah, overs and unders, various challenges, um, and just to sort of acknowledge uh, the dividend of $20 million was paid um, in March, and we're on track to deliver the uh, targeted full-year dividend of $50.7 million from CCHL for the full financial year. Um, just to flag the return on equity number there, I think um, sort of a noticeable decline. Um, the reason why it was higher was really related to property revaluations that came through um, uh, within the, the Christchurch Airport portfolio predominantly um, and that's because it's a full year number and so it came through in that prior period six percent so sort of to explain that um, I'll hand to you hey. Abby to um, cover off the intellectual okay. um, so I just take take this opportunity to just remind you that the, the categories of the targets that we're using relate to the four capitals that we have um, adopted for the purposes of integrated reporting so um, the second one that I'm going to talk to is the in intellectual capital uh, and there are some targets there that um, that I just want to talk to performance of. So you'll see we're up slightly on the um, on the uh, female balance in the director pool, but I would point out that in 2023 we appointed 17 directors across the CCHL um, group subsidiaries with the other C, um, COs, and there was a 50-50 gender split of those appointments in that year. Uh, we, uh, you know, as I've talked to you about before, we've um, we've introduced some new tools and uh, processes around um, the governance review, uh, and that's um, helped us to support those recruitment efforts. We've introduced a new online skills matrix tool for um, all of the CCOs, uh, and that will also enable us um, going forward to collect um, a range of diversity statistics, which we're not currently able to collect. So at the moment, we're simply reporting um, gender diversity, but obviously, as you're aware, and we've talked about before, there are a whole number of different aspects of diversity, and that continues to be a focus for us. Um, we're also uh, in the process of working through an annual board sort of performance evaluation um, tool, which will be implemented this year, and that will also support um, further appointments going forward. And then finally, um, the, uh, the gender pay gap analysis, um, we've now uh, got agreement on an external provider to support that and the methodology and approach that will be used and we'll be starting that work um, in April. So um, we hope to be able to provide you with the um, output from that um, in our next, um, in our full year report. Uh, I won't talk to the others in terms of the strategic review. I think we're all clear on that. Um, and we've, um, we, I've talked about the governance uh, program. So I'll just move us on then to um, social relationships, um, which is the third of the capitals. Thanks, Abby. I guess um, just to sort of, you know, the, the slide sort of speaks for itself in terms of we're on track. Uh, but uh, to provide a little bit more context, um, you know, we, they are, we are getting all the critical risks reported back to CCHL. But um, I have some sympathy, and I know this has been voiced at the table a number of times around uh, getting uh, uh, trend reporting and understanding our health and safety position a little bit better at a group level. Um, we will move to reporting standard metrics. Um, so uh, I have some understanding of coming in and reading the individual reports from the subsidiaries, how uh, it can be a little bit, uh, everybody's doing it slightly differently and reporting on different things. So um, I know it was mentioned in the LOE um, that uh, a desire to have us work on our reporting and so we are going to be picking that up um, with council management in the, in the near term regarding um, how we go forward. Um, but you know, the board approved health and safety plans are in place. Um, uh, probably one thing to specifically note is um, the materiality assessment, um, we're kicking that off um, as we speak. Some of you will be involved in that. That's part of our integrated reporting um, and a variety. I think we're up to uh, over 20 internal and external stakeholders that will be involved in interviews as part of that particular process. But um, yeah, look forward to sort of working with Council and you know, coming up with uh, uh, improved reporting around um, this health and safety and uh, aspects uh, going forward. Um, on to the natural capital and you know, in the short term I guess it's a very busy period for us. Uh, council uh, 
holdings is completed, so the missions reduction plan, and um, we're in the process of reviewing that data and uh, the long-term science-based targets across the group to be finalised before the year end. I'm conscious we do have an upcoming meeting to discuss um, Council's emissions reduction plan within the context of CCHL, uh, and that's uh, scheduled for the next couple of months, so we'll pick up um, what that means at that particular briefing. Um, uh, uh, another particular aspect is the carbon accounting tool um, has been implemented uh, consolidating greenhouse gas emissions across the group um, and reporting and we're on track to deliver our first set of climate related disclosures. Uh, I guess stepping back from all of those short term um, uh, sort of uh, work agenda items in many respects, uh, this is probably a longer term piece here where you know, we're uh, engaging with the subsidiaries uh, around you know optimising their expenditure as a means of getting best bang for buck um, emissions reduction um, and, and planning their capex profile um, so that they can achieve uh, their outcomes over the long term, which will be an ongoing evolution. Uh, and there's really two, two aspects to that. There's the, the uh, expenditure in their own right um, with respect to their own direct assets and also um, uh, operating in very hard to abate sectors in many respects, uh, how we can enable uh, um, invest in those enabling works, um, whether it's hydrogen, whether it's electricity, whether it's ammonia, whatever uh, it, it needs to be, um, you know, there's a big long-term planning piece there that uh, is, is an evolution, I suppose, and you know, just a, that's really a, a focus of ours going forward um, a, as a means of uh, achieving these longer-term targets um, on top of probably a lot of that shorter-term stuff that I just talked to. Paul, I'll perhaps pass to you to sort of take it from here and uh, the look forward scenario. Yeah, so even though the, the purpose of this session is to um, is to present our, uh, our half year report, um, uh, we also in that period received new direction from you um, in December in terms of um, moving to implement the enhanced status quo option that we uh, all developed um, during the strategic review work program last year. Um, so we are underway. Um, uh, the thing I would stress is that um, it's not necessarily a new strategy, it's an evolution uh, of a shift that was already underway uh, within CCHL. Anyway, that, that shift started um, with the decisions you took at the end of 2022 to, to strengthen the independence of CCHL by uh, appointing an additional two independent directors. Uh, and there were a number of things that we we, uh, we did last year, not, not just the strategic review, um, which reflected that, that more active uh, ownership role that we are, we are looking to take. Um, so in terms of uh, what's important for us just over the next few months, um, so we, we have presented the, the draft SOI and you've received the draft subsidiary SOIs. Those SOIs were prepared on the basis of the direction we received in December and the letters of expectations that we issued to the subsidiaries at that time. We've obviously now received your LOE, um, so we need to go through a process ourselves of, of, of considering what you requested and, and whether our SOI reflects, uh, accurately reflects the things that you're asking for within that, that letter of expectation. Um, the letter does uh, provide the opportunity for us to seek clarification uh, on some matters and, and that's what we will be doing when we come to you in the SOI workshop in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, as I said, we are uh, implementing the enhanced status quo. So again, this is a transition of our active ownership role um, it is a more structured approach than the, uh, the the kind of episodic periods of activity or active ownership that CCHL has um, uh, has uh, delivered in the past. So, so I stress that, that that even though we we kind of started with a starting point that was passive, uh, that's not to say that CCHL hasn't been active. It's just that it, that, that we're we're moving towards a more a more structured approach, and and that more structured approach is, is based around uh, how we see ourselves as a parent. So if we say we're going to be a more active owner, what does that actually mean? Uh, and we need to be clear with you. We need to be clear with the subs about what that looks like, um, how we manage the group uh, as a more active parent, and then what do we expect of the entities themselves. So we'll, we'll deal with that in, in more detail um, during the, the coming uh, coming workshops. And then obviously the other thing that we're, we're, we're moving towards is introducing a capital allocation framework. So, so rather than just being a, a funder of the group, um, we all know that we're operating with a, a tighter budget, um, a, more, a more capital constrained uh, backdrop, um, and we need to be really clear uh, about how we think we can get the best bang for, for buck and using the capital that's available to us within well, in, in CCHL, uh, and that and that's obviously intended to be aligned to the the long term investment objectives that uh, were that form part of the value strategy um, 
last year, and then as Matt said, we're, we've, we've got a significant piece of work underway uh, in terms of preparing our, our first climate statement. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavour on, on the things that we're focused on at the moment. Um, and as I said earlier, we'll, we'll be back in front of you on a number of occasions in the, in the coming months. That's the end of our presentation. That's, so that's all good. Has anyone got any questions? Bearing in mind that we're going to go into PX and ask probably more questions. Councillor Johansson. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Keeping it in line with what we can talk of out of PX. Please. Sure. Well, obviously we've seen, I mean, the, the, the big announcement has been what's happening with the Terrace Airport. I wonder if you could just give us a view on that decision. Um, well, again, just taking the Mayor's direction, uh, this discussion is relative to the uh, interim report. Um, so we've obviously um, uh, uh, con consulted with the airport on, on where that terrace project is, and we can talk about it in a bit more detail okay. next um, session. I was, I was quite interested in how we work together, and obviously um, quite surprised that you'd hire like a public relations company to sort of work through the asset sales business case messaging. And in some cases, when I look at that, it almost seems like councils are sort of being um, encouraged what to say. And this is part of the slides that were released as part of the uh, Lagoima into the business case um, plans. Are, are you able just to give us a sense of why CSHA would feel the need to hire sort of independent comms, public relations advice to work us through a business case? Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, so, so one, you know, we do have an external comms advisor because we don't have a huge number of staff internally. So I guess that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that we were very conscious that a lot of the language that we might be comfortable to use uh, ourselves is not language that is necessarily well understood, um, it, it being technical and specific to the finance industry. And actually, that's not helpful if we're talking past each other because we're not using terms that people understand. So that was the, that was the key driver is to actually ensure that what we were saying was clear and understandable to people who didn't come from the finance industry. And, and the other thing that I would add is that um, uh, if, if you're talking about the materials that we released in um, a couple of months ago that are on our website, is that that particular engagement with the Urban Advisory Group was specific to developing a stakeholder engagement plan to help support the the delivery of the uh, strategic review and the primary point of focus of that stakeholder engagement plan was actually how we communicated with you as a council. It wasn't it wasn't geared to uh, what messaging we were delivering externally. You know, we always acknowledged that the decision was one for council to make, um, and we weren't looking to pre-sell any outcome uh, in any way. And we didn't communicate that way during the completion of the strategic review either. But you're aware that that document gives a narrative for councillors to take. But well, when you're developing a stakeholder engagement plan, an effective stakeholder engagement plan, it covers a number of a number of things, you know, identifying who who your key stakeholders are, uh, what you think their interests are, how you intend to communicate with them, what is the purpose of that communication, what do you want to get from them. There's a whole bunch of things that go in there, and so that does need to be comprehensive. Um, but again, I'd say it was specific to the strategic review. And, and, and if we had continued down that path, obviously that would have been something that would have come to you to, to critique and and right. say whether that. And was how much did that pay our Thank costs. you, Jan. We've released all the costs for the strategic review. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so I'm happy to move this, and Councillor um, Barbara is happy to second it, to receive the information in this report. Can I please... Uh, oh yeah, well, well, I'll put this motion. All those in favour? Aye. Against. Thank you, that's carried. Now we're going...